Hey folks, today I'm going to be scanning an alien sculpture with the new 3D Maker Pro Moose 3D Scanner. And this video is also sponsored by 3D Maker Pro. But before I get into the scanning, I need to explain what made this project a bit more of a rescue operation than a simple scanning demo. This was originally going to be a project where I just scan the sculpture of the mask that I was working on, and then we can look at how the scanner performs and be done with it. But something went very wrong. This is the wed clay sculpture of Antron, my recently completed uh, alien creature mask sculpture. I molded the sculpture with hydrocal plaster, as I normally do, but when I went to demold it, I started seeing chunks of plaster breaking off of the mold and sticking to the clay. This is a disaster scenario. The original sculpture is almost always destroyed in making the mold, and now the mold itself is also falling apart before I can even get a copy out of it. When I got to this point, I just had to step away and come back later. I'm not sure what the problem actually comes from. Um, this was a new batch of plaster that could have actually been old plaster. I also used a, a sealant that I don't normally use and a different release agent. So there's sort of too many possibilities for what made this happen in the first place. Um, I don't see it being a problem that's going to happen again despite that. But at any rate, if I want to save this mask, um, I had to come up with a plan. Now, the lesson here is to always just go ahead and 3D scan your sculptures before you mold them. It only takes a few minutes and then you have a backup copy. But since I didn't do that, I can still use 3D scanning to repair the damage that's been done. I could try to scan the inside of the mold, um, but I think I'm going to get a much better result if I can get a positive out of that so that I can scan every angle a little bit better. So I want to sort of do what I can to get the best casting that I can out of this damaged mold and then work from that. Then I'll have a digital copy of the mask that I can not only do my repairs too, but also recreate in different scales. And I think right now I want to get some magnets made. So I'm going to move forward with that plan. What I decided to do was to glue all of the larger pieces of plaster back into the mold as well as I could. Then I used epoxy sculpt to fill in most of the remaining gaps. Epoxy sculpt is a two part putty that's very sculptable. You get a couple hours of working time and then it fully hardens overnight. So I mixed up small batches and patched a few parts of the mold at a time. I didn't want to go crazy with it because the way that a plaster mold works with latex relies on the porosity of the plaster drawing moisture out of the latex to build up a thickness of the latex in the mold. The epoxy clay doesn't have that porosity, so the epoxy areas of the mold most likely aren't going to be able to build up as much thickness as the plaster parts of the mold. So I patched up the biggest problems and left some of the others to repair in the computer. Once I patched up as much as I could, I was ready to pour latex. I spritz the inside of the mold with water to help break the surface tension and reduce bubbles in the latex casting. Then I closed up the mold and filled it up with latex. This took just over five gallons to fill. Now the longer you leave latex to dwell in the mold, the thicker the casting will be, so I left this for four or five hours to try to get it really nice and thick. It was a real trick to pour the latex back into the bucket after that, since the mold was pretty heavy even before five gallons of liquid were poured into it. But once I got that draining, I left it to dry out and then filled the inside with an expanding flexible foam so that it would hold the shape. When I demolded it, this is what I saw. It's still got some pretty rough spots, but it's going to be salvageable. 
I could sand down and build up right on the latex casting, and I may still do that to make a nice mask copy, but I think it's going to be faster to repair the rest in ZBrush. So now I can finally start scanning. There are two versions of the Moose Scanner from 3D Maker Pro, the Moose and the Moose Lite. What's interesting is they're actually using different technologies. The Moose uses blue light like their seal and other scanners designed for scanning very small objects, while the Moose Lite uses infrared light like their mole scanner and a lot of other scanners that do medium-sized objects. The Moose has a slightly finer accuracy. So I don't know the science of it all, but that's something to keep in mind. The blue light mousse is what I have here. I found that it scans really easily. I was able to move pretty quickly and smoothly through the scanning. As I was going around the mask, it rarely lost tracking. And while it seemed to misalign some areas by the time I got all the way back around, everything popped into alignment when I processed the scan. For me, the main drawback I encountered was that the cable is a little short, considering that it splits part way to a USB to the computer and another USB that's just for power. There's another brand of consumer level 3D scanners that I've demonstrated here that only has a single USB to the computer for both data and power. So I asked 3D Maker Pro about the second power cable. They explained that having a dedicated secondary power source is allowing the LEDs on the scanner to be powered directly through that, giving them much more consistent power, which will lead to more consistent scan results. And it certainly seems to work despite the minor inconvenience. I brought the finished scan into ZBrush to see it clearly. The scan turned out pretty good, as with all the scanners I've tried, it's a great starting point, but the level of detail is not perfect. For what I'm doing, it's going to be great though. Whenever I'm modifying something like this, I make a backup copy of the raw scan once I've aligned it, and then start re-sculpting on the duplicate. The first thing I wanna do is shave down the seam lines, which I'll do with the H polish brush and a little bit of smooth brush. I'm flattening out all the bumpy texture from the broken mold with the H polish brush, and then finessing with the clay buildup and damn standard brushes to carve the lines back in that are missing. After a little more work, it's looking pretty much like new. I'll slice it in half by subtracting a cube from the backside, and now it's a great little magnet form factor. Slice that for printing, and there we go. I ran off four of them in resin to check it. Eventually I will make a mold of these, but I wanted to try out the paint job. I'm thinking I'll do them up something like this. So that's the Antron story up to this point. Eventually I'm still going to repair a full-size latex casting so that I can make an actual mask version of it. It's awesome that 3D scanning is now an accessible tool that we can use to do these sorts of restorations. I wanna thank 3D Maker Pro for sending me the new Moose 3D scanner and for sponsoring this video. You'll find a link in the description for more info on the scanner, and I believe there may also be an extra discount in there exclusive for you. It helps me out if you click those links so that they know that people are watching this video and engaging with it and finding it helpful for the future. So remember to scan your sculptures. Check back soon or subscribe if you haven't because I'll have some more cool projects coming up.